Hey guys, we're going to make some natural cordage today. Wait, did I say natural? I meant really unnatural. We're going to make cordage today out of grocery bags. Aww. Let's get to it. Alright, so once you've selected your finest grocery bag, we're going to cut this into strips. I'm just going to use a roller cutter now for speed, time's sake. You could use a knife, whatever in the field. Cut the top half off, and now I'm going to cut some strips that are maybe about one or two inches wide. Nothing too scientific, just kind of have at it. But I'm shooting for about one or two inches wide or so. Now I'm going to take these strips, cut them on the ends, like so, and I'm going to go ahead and cut that strip in half. So we've got two smaller sections. Boom, boom. Now you can make as many of these strips as you want. I'm got, not going to make a ton because I'm not going to make a big section of cordage today. But cut as many of these as you want. It's actually always nice to have quite a few because we've got an extra step we're going to do here that is actually a little annoying and can cost you some plastic. So we've got our piece of plastic here. Now if you were just to make cordage out of this strip of plastic, the breaking strength would be garbage because you're not compressing the fibers enough. These fibers are pretty weak like this. So what we need to do is kind of extrude this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch this between my fingers, try to pull with even pressure. That's going to happen a lot. It just breaks. But I'm going to pinch and pull. see how that's stretching out now it'll come to a point where it stops stretching that's the point you want to stop from there I'll work my way up pinch and pull and I'm just taking it right to the point where it stops stretching anything more and it's gonna break on you pull stretch stops now we'll go to this side, pull till the stretch stops. And what I'm doing, I'm kind of watching that bag as I pull, and it changes colors. It goes from kind of a white to uh, being pretty, pretty much transparent. But you can see that small little piece of bag is now actually turned into a pretty large section of plastic. There we go. That's about all I'm going to get out of that. I'll usually give the whole thing one good tug just to make sure everything's nice and stretched. Now you just want to do keep doing that and make quite a few sections like this. All right, we've got that plastic all twisted out. Now what in the world do we do? Well, for the moment, I want to show you. I'm just going to grab this between uh, my index and my thumb with my left hand. I'm going to pull it down. You can see these two ends are different lengths. That's what we want. We want to stagger those. Okay, We don't want them to be the same length. That's going to help us out later. I'm just going to pinch that between my uh, thumb and my index. And I've got a piece coming this way and a piece coming down. So I've got a piece going towards my right and a piece going straight down. Now this piece that's going to the right, I'm going to take it and I'm going to twist that away from me until it starts to bunch up. Then I'm going to come underneath with these two fingers and grab the bottom and bring it up behind that piece I just twisted. Pinch it again. So now the top piece has become the bottom piece. Now this new top piece, we're going to twist it away from us and repeat. Grab the bottom, bring it up behind. Twist away, grab the bottom, bring it up behind. Twist away bottom behind. So the bottom part gets twisted up to the top. You just bring it behind. You see on this end, it's starting to do something. So just keep that pinch there. So my top piece twisted away from me. Pull the bottom up. Twist it away. Bottom up. That's what we're just going to keep doing. So again, Twist away, bottom comes up. Once you get the hang of that, 
you can get going pretty quick with it and it's always twisting away and the bottom's always coming up and behind the top piece so one more time twisting it away from me till it bunches up grabbing that bottom piece bringing it up behind and the piece I just twisted comes down to the bottom if you happen to let go of it the world's not going to end it's not going to come unraveled on you okay and then all you got to do is look at the piece that's coming over and make sure that that's on the bottom and you're ready to start again all right so we're starting to run out of material here now what do we do well what we're going to do keeping my pinch I'm going to take another piece of material and I'm going to bring it up into that pinch okay and I'm just going to twist that into my top piece and keep going just like we were before so twist it right in keep working as usual twisting it in so twisting that away coming down bottom piece is coming up behind what this is doing is it's getting all locked into everything and once you get down towards this bottom section here it's just going to become my new piece of material so I like to I like to add another piece when I've gotten down to having about two inches or so now up here you can see we do have this little tag piece sticking out doesn't matter that can be trimmed out later if you want it's in there it's not going anywhere I'm pulling pretty hard on that alright so just to show you again because I do need another piece here I'm gonna get this right up here in the main bunch and pinch it and then twist it into my short end and then just go right back to what we were doing before So in this area, because we added that, we, we do have some crazy kind of pieces hanging out there. Not a big deal. So for demonstration's sake, I think that's plenty. I'm not going to make much more. So what I would do, would just I would come in, tie this off, just basic little overhand. Get both of those ends through there. Tie that off. You can add more if you want to. That little overhand finishes it off. That'll keep it together. So now I can give that a good pull. And you can see those pieces that we added aren't going anywhere. So if you want to, if you want to pretty things up a little bit, you can come in and kind of cut these off short. They, they don't hurt anything. And uh, I don't really worry about it. It's kind of part of the the natural cordage charm but if you're going to snip them off make sure you're not snipping your main line but I'm not going to worry about those I'm going to leave them there nice and firm not going anywhere so you can see this process makes pretty small stuff it's not big cord now that being said loop this around my fingers here I think you'll be surprised once you get some made just how strong this stuff is Ugh. that put some pretty good indentions in my fingers so the brake strength on this stuff is actually really impressive for how small it is so basic little jobs I wouldn't consider this load bearing by any means but if you're just lashing something together maybe uh, you know non load bearing sections in a shelter or something like that this stuff works great so this is useful stuff it's a nice small cordage you can see I, I broke this thing twice and the sections where we added in our extra pieces still totally together so I think that's a mystery for some people how they add in more material to keep going and that's all it is lay it in there twist it together and just keep going about your business and it'll get locked in there it won't go anywhere to finish it off you can add a few basic just little overhand knots at the end of your cord and it'll finish it off the good thing about this this furling process 
doesn't really allow, allow it to unravel. I mean, of course, you want to finish your cord off, but it doesn't take anything too scientific to do it. So just a couple little basic knots there at the end is all it takes. The top end, since that's where we started, that's not an open end. It's a closed end, so it can't really come apart. But I'll usually put a, a little knot up there as well, just for uh, peace of mind. But uh, I think it's something that's easy to overcomplicate, but it's really not hard. Again, it's pinch, twist away, bottom comes behind. Twist away, bottom comes behind. That's it. You just keep doing that process. Experiment with materials. You know the inner layer of poplar bark works great. There's grasses that work. Cattail fibers work. There's all kinds of stuff out there that you can use. Once you know how to do it, the best thing you can do is just get materials and try it. See what works out for you. But it's just a nice way to do something with old bags. I mean, they're they're nasty, you know, like I say, you find them in ditches, people throw them out of cars, they get blown away by the wind. It's something that it's, it's they're not hard to find. So it's just a good thing to know that you can use that material for this. And then, of course, you want to learn what natural materials you can use as well. Like I say, when we get some decent weather, we'll probably go out and do one using some natural fibers as well. But uh, that's all there is to it. Thank you all very much for checking us out. Have a great one.